But before we proceed to those manners and those ethics, the ayah that I just read is in Surah Al Mujadala. And it's one of the ayahs that the word Majalis is mentioning. Majalis is the plural of Majlis. Majlis is a singular. Majalis is the plural. And the word Majalis is mentioned in Surah Al Mujadala. Ayah 11. Before we proceed, let's see why this ayah was revealed. Because this ayah also talks about the ethics of gatherings. The Mufassirin mentioned that one day Rasulullah was given khutbah. And the majlis was filled with people. A man came a little late and he was looking for a place and he couldn't find then he found that there was a small chance that he could sit between two brothers. Then he walked closer. As he tried to sit, the other movement wouldn't move. You know, it's like some people, mashallah, you know, in Masajid and Majalis, there are people like that. You know, they have their spot, nobody touches it. It's like they bought it, they own it, it's just this. The man would not move. The Prophet was giving the khutbah. The Prophet was forced to stop his khutbah. And he told the man, the brother, the first son, make your room for a brother. He came late, he wanted to sit next to you, he said, make your room for him. After the khutbah, Allah sent this ayah, ayah 11 of Surah Al Mujadala. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu. Oh, those of you who believe, Ida qila lakum tafassahu. When you are told in the gatherings, make a room. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, make a room for others. If you make a room for others, Allah says, Yafsahillahu lakum. You make a room for your brother, Allah said, I will make a room for you. You know, this is a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make a room for a mu'min in the majlis, Allah said, I will make a room for you, you al qiyamah. When you are told by the Prophet, Unshuz in Arabic, meaning, Irfa, uplift yourself in knowledge, in taqwa. He said, Fanshuz, uplift yourself. Why? Then Allah added, Yarfa illahu alladheena amanu minkum, walladheena utu la ilma darajat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Islam, we are all equal in the sight of Allah. The only, the only things that gives a preference 
in the sight of Allah is two things. Other than that, and in the front of Allah, we are all equal. Allah doesn't care about what I wear, doesn't care how I look, doesn't care about the house I live in, doesn't care about the type of shoe I wear. Doesn't matter if you go to Walmart to buy your clothes or you go to Macy's. Allah doesn't care. <laughs> who is expensive, who is cheap, Allah doesn't care. Allah said, the only thing I care is your heart and your iman. That's what makes different in the sight of Allah. Not the looks. For us, the looks makes different. Allah said, in Islam, two things makes you better than the other. Number one, your iman and your fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna akramakum inda Allah atqaqum. The one who fears Allah the most is the one who is better in the sight of Allah. That is one. Number two, al-ilm, the knowledge. And when we say knowledge, we mean, don't mean knowledge means I memorize the terms. No. Meaning al-ilm that am comes with the practice. I learn, I practice. That is the end that's talking about. Allah says, if you have these two, al-ilm, al-ilm, the knowledge, plus fear of Allah, Allah said, I promise you that I will raise you. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَةً You also have different levels. Then Allah said, وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا Allah said, I am aware about everything that you do. Whether it's in public or in private, Allah said, I'm aware about it. There is the ayah about this ayah. There is the tafsir about this ayah. But coming to the point about our main topic, what are the ethics of majalis of Ahlul Bayt No necessary for Muharram. Every majlis, because every majlis that we gather, whether it's meant for Imam al naqi or it's meant of Imam al taqi or it's meant for Imam Musa al kadhim they all won. Ahlul Bayt, they all won. Awaluna Muhammad, Awsatuna Muhammad, Wa Akhiruna Muhammad, Wa Kulluna Muhammad. Muhammad. The same thing applies to the Prophet in Surah Al Baqarah. Allah tells you, as one of the Islamic belief, La Nufarriqu Bayna Ahadil Min Rusuli. All the Prophets across the board, they are all one. If you, I disrespect La Sama Allah, Prophet Lut is like I disrespect the entire Prophet. That's why in Surah Al Baqarah, Allah tells you, He says, if you want to be a Muslim, you cannot be a Mu'min unless you believe in all the Prophet. You cannot pick and choose. Allah said in the Quran, Surah Al Baqarah, and the quality of Muttaqun, Allah stated, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Everything that was sent before the Prophet, you have to believe in. You cannot pick and choose. Ahlul Bayt are the same. I cannot pick and choose that I do or I respect this majlis and I don't respect this majlis. No, all of them is one. Every majlis, they have the same ethics. Now, where do we start in terms of the ethics of majlis of Ahlul Bayt? Number one, the place that we're supposed to start is that Every month that there is anything about Ahlul Bayt, that month have to have a special respect from us. And especially the month of Muharram. This month of Muharram, we have to understand, it's not like any other month that you and, you and I can even imagine. Not because I'm saying it, because Allah said so. In the Quran, Allah says, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورَ إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِثْنَ يَعَشَرَ شَهْرًا Allah said, I created 12 months, but مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمٌ Allah said, then I choose four. And حُرُم means, from the word حَرَام. حَرَام means sacred. That was the Masjid al-Haram, the sacred mosque. Allah says, those four, I made them sacred. They're holy. What are the four months? The first one is Muharram. Is one of the holy month that Allah chose. So when Muharram comes, I have to have a special respect for this month, not because I want, because Allah wants. The same way that you and I, we don't have a choice to respect the Prophet because Allah chose him. We don't have any choice to, 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 to respect Imams because Allah chose them. We have to because it's Allah's choice. 
Muharram is the month that Allah said, I chose out of the 12 months, I chose four of them. <coughs> and one of the chosen months is Muharram and Safar and Rajab. And some scholar says, Dhul Qa'da and Dhul Hajj. The all month that Allah chose, they are a sacred month. So when this month comes, I have to know it's a special month because Allah chose. That is one. Number two, I have to understand not only just the month, the night of this month is also chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm taking you step by step to understand the importance of this month. It's not just from the hadith, from the Quran, from the Quran point of view. First, I gave you the ayah Allah mentioned. Now the night of Muharram is also chosen. Where in Surah Al-Fajr? Wal-Fajr wa layalin ashr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I swear by the dawn. And I swear by the ten nights. Now what are the ten nights? Tafsir Nur al from Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. They ask Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. What are the ten nights that Allah is talking about in this eye that Allah is swearing by it? Imam says, Ihiya layali ashura. The nights of ashura. Imam tells us, Allah swear by it. In the Quran, for that matter, you have to understand when Allah swears in the Quran, there is something important to learn, and that is whatever He swears by is so important to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wouldn't swear with them something that is not important. So when Allah said, "I swear by the ten night," here yeah, there are two tafsir. Some tafsir says the ten nights is referring to the ten days of the Hajj, right? The first ten days of the Hajj. And some to see it, they also say is the ayah is ten night of Muharram, but it doesn't make any contradiction. They could be two, two of them though together. Because Muharram, it started from the Hajj, then Muharram came. When you go back to Dua Ayyum Arafa that Imam Hussein alayhi salam read, from that dua you can tell how Imam Hussein started from the Hajj and he connected it to, to Muharram. And where he started about the month of Dhul Hajj and, and the month of uh, Dhul Hajj and then the Hajj and the sacred practice in Hajj and then he goes to Muharram to talk about how he will be killed and wallah someday maybe when we get a chance we talk about Dua Arafah how Imam Hussein given, gives condolences to himself before it, before it happened and I just give you one word in Dua Arafah to think about that one part Imam Hussein says in Dua Arafah, this word Imam Hussein mentioned in Dua Arafah, and in Arabic, when you look at this word, Hamala in Arabic is used when a head is cut and carried. That's when the word Hamala is used in Arabic. And Imam Hussein mentioned this word in Dhul Hajj, he was talking about what will happen to him in Muharram. So they are connected. So to understand the importance of Muharram, we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorifies the Muharram and glorifies the night of Muharram. That is number two. Number three in the hadith of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. Imam al-Rada alayhi salam. He talks about the importance of Muharram. He says Muharram is not sacred month to us. He said before Islam, the idol worshippers they used to glorify the month of Muharram. They used to fight, but when Muharram comes, they pause. Nobody fights in the Muharram. They are not Muslims. They don't believe in Allah. They are idol worshippers. But they have a special respect for Muharram. They wait until Muharram and Safar passes. Then they continue to fight. They do it haram. But when the Muharram comes, they have a special respect for this month. So the, the importance of Muharram is not just in the month of, and it's not just in Islam. Even before Islam, they also respect. That is in terms of the hadith. Now logic, why? Why should we respect Muharram? Brothers and sisters, let me give you an example and I'll connect you with why we need to respect this month. If you and I, you come to your house and God forbid and God protect all of you. You come home and you hear that somebody come, came to your house to kill you. 
But you came, you're not there, and he thought Mr. Zaid was you. And he killed Zaid because he thought you are the Zaid. And you came to find out Zaid lost his life because of you. How would you treat Zaid and his family? Huh? He, he was killed because of you. Now, if you want to go and say the condolences to Zaid, would you go with respect? And would you go with the sorrow? Or you go to visit Zaid with smile? Which one? Condolences. Oh. Imam Hussein alayhi salam didn't die for himself. We have to understand that. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he died and got killed because of us. So when the month that Imam Hussein got killed ended, and that month we supposed to respect that month, or we supposed to take that month lightly? Because remember, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the reason why he gave his life, and all al bayt in that matter, they gave their life to, to, to protect this religion. Because remember, Yazid, what did he used to say? He said, I don't want to leave anything about this Islam, but just the name. I don't want to anything about Quran, but just the image and the picture of it. That's all I want to I want to kill Islam from within and just leave the name. I want to kill this Quran and just live by the papers. So Imam Hussein came in order for you and I not to be uh, living as people who are just image of Islam, not a real Islam. He gave his life in order to save this religion for you and I. And he mentioned in his own speech, he said, إِن لَمْ يَسْتَقِمْ دِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ إِلَّا بِقَتْلِي in one hadith, Illa bidami fayasu He said, if this religion of Muhammad is not complete, but what my blood, I say, I'm ready to give my body, my life, my soul for this religion. <clears throat> so we have to understand logically, Imam Hussein, well, he sacrificed for us. So when the month of Muharram comes, it's supposed to be a month of respecting a person who gave his life in order to save us. That is one reason to understand the importance of this move, Muharram and Safar. That is number one. Number two. Now coming to the ethics. Where does the ethics start of Muharram? It starts by understanding the importance of this month. That's where we started. Now after I understand, before I think of going to Majlis, first we have to start of what do I dress? How do I present myself in Majlis? There is a book, I'm not sure if it's translated in English or not. It's called Lubsus Sawad. The importance of wearing black. And you can check it. I believe there is a website called Rafid. It's one of the Sayyid Sistani's organization in Qom. And they have the book there on that website. The hadith about the importance of what to wear. To go to the majalis of Ali al-Bayt That in the month of Muharram or in any such occasion, it is mustahab to wear certain clothes to go to the majalis of Imam Hussein. And especially and particularly wearing black during the month of Muharram. It's highly recommended. Before we go to the majlis, I have to check myself. The same way before I pray. Before namaz, you have to watch for three things. Every person before you do salah, Three important things after law. One is, number one, I have to check about najasa of my clothes. That is one. Number two, about the place. All right? And number three, my body too. I have to make sure there's no najasa. Clothes, the body, and the place. The same way. Before we go to the majlis, one have to make sure that they are wearing black clothes. And it's mustahab. There is a specific thawab for wearing black during the time of Muharram. Or Majalis of Adil Bayt alayhi wasalam. And some narration even mentioned that if a person wears black in Muharram or in the Majalis of Adil Bayt alayhi wasalam, Allah also increased their thawab. And Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam, they also put the person among those who they will give shafa'a yawm al That is the significance of just wearing black in the Majalis of Adil Bayt alayhi wasalam. That is number one. 
of majalis, the ethics. Before I get to the majlis, I have to check myself. And this comes to, unfortunately, sometimes when we go to the majalis, we forget to dress properly. When we go for our own job, if anybody has an interview, job interview, right? How do we dress to go to the interview? And you are just to meet what? a boss. All he could do is say, I'm not hiring you. That's all he could do. He's not going to put you in jail. He's not going to fight. He's going to, all he can say, I'm not going to hire you. But what happened? MashaAllah. That day I have to iron my clothes, the tire, everything I have to look neat. I look behind and front. Ask my wife, how do I look? Do I present nice? How do I, right? You have to even practice in your room. How do you, you know, how do you present yourself? So you can get the job. That is to meet a man, a person like you, for a job. Now, when you go to a meeting of Ahlul Bayt, how should you dress? This is Imam you're going to. So it's very important before we go to the Majalis, we have to dress properly. Hijab for sisters properly. Brothers, wear nice clothes before you go. That is one of the ethics of Majalis of Ahlul Bayt. Proper dress, that is one. Number two, another important question, and especially with the technology that we have. A lot of people ask, now they have cameras, right? Why do I have to drive one hour 45 minutes? I can sit clip, huh? Maulana is here. I can get Maulana in my own house. Why do I have to go to there somewhere to sit and watch you? Right? So it's a convenience. So is it better to sit at my home watching or oh not to go to a place and listen? You know, we are not against technology. Technology is good. You can sit down in your own room, in your own comfortable bed and watch the majlis. That's cool. But one thing you have to understand. The thawab of a person who goes to a place where majlis is gathered is not going to be the same like him. That is to keep in mind. That if I chose to stay home just to watch on camera, yes, you get the thawab. But you're not going to get the thawab of somebody who drives. Because a person who drives to a majlis, every step they get thawab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because one important message too. To understand Islamic, this is just Islamic rule in general, and you can apply it in everywhere. And it's said by the Prophet, Al Ajru ala qadr al mashaqa. In Islam, the reward is more based on how much effort you have put in your ibadah. If I put 10%, don't expect 100% from Allah, no. 10% effort, you get 10%. If somebody put 100%, you think Allah is going to give him 10 and give you 100%? No, it doesn't work like that. A person who drives in cold weather, driving to a majlis somewhere, and the person who sits in their room comfortable, mashallah, is not going to be the same. So the answer is, if I have a choice between staying home and between going to the majlis where the majlis is being gathered, as the better is to go there and sit there and listen to the majlis. That the world is not the same. Remember one ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Faddal Allah al Mujahideena al al Qaideena daraja. Allah said, Those who do jihad and those who are sitting, they are not the same. There's two different things. So the second thing is, uh, the adab and the ethics of majlis is to go there if you can. Yes, if you have a reason, sickness is reason, that's fine. But the best reason is to, the best, the best between the two is to go to the majlis. That is number two, one of the ethics. Number three, as we go to the majlis, it's highly recommended to go to the majlis while we are in the state of khushu'a. State of what? Khushu'a, humbleness. When I'm going to the majlis, it is recommended while I'm going to the majlis, I have to be in the state of humbleness, in the state of sorrow, in the state of sadness for Ahlul Bayt That is number three. Unfortunately, sometimes when we go to the majalis, and not just majalis, and this is very unfortunate, very unfortunate, that is our akhlaq, we go to the majalis, which is good, 
May Allah bless us for coming to the majalis. But if we can work on ourselves to stop those little things that can affect our tawab, it makes our, our reward even bigger. Number one, and this is out of the context, but I'm coming back to the point. Sometimes we go to the graveyard, somebody passed away, right? We're supposed to be thinking about death. But you know what we do then? Talk about business. We're talking about worldly issues. No, you brought somebody to bury. Shouldn't you be thinking about that someday I will be brought the same like him or her? Someday I will be in the same state that they are in? What lesson can I take so when I go home I can be a better person? But instead, no, what are we going to talk about business? What are you going to do from here? What are you going to buy? What are you going to sell? That is not the place to do all this. And majlis also the same thing. When we come to the majlis or go into the majlis, we have to keep ourselves in the state of Ahlul Bayt That when I'm going to the majlis, there is something I have to let it keep ringing in my mind. And that is what? And that is, I'm saying to Imam that I'm going for his majlis, I'm saying to him, La Bayt, here I am in response to your call. You know, in the Ziyara, we said, إِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِبْكَ بَدَنِي حِينَ اسْتِغَاثَتُكْ فَقَدْ عَجَابَكَ بَدَنِي He said, if I was not able to respond to the call, when you call on the day of Ashura, when he says, هَلْ مِنْ نَاصِرًا يَنْصُرْنَا And I wasn't there to respond to the call, now here I am, I'm responding that call to you. Now when you're responding the call, should you be in the state of somebody who is sad and what Imam Hussein went through, or should I be like normal person? That is very important. As we go to the majlis, we have to make sure that we are in the state of khushu. That is number three of those, of the, of the, of those ethics. Now when we get to the majlis, I have to make sure that the majlis is a special place. Doesn't matter. In the house, or in the center, or anywhere. Why? What makes a special place? Because we have hadith. Any place which is meant for Ahlul Bayt, you know who comes there? No, huh? If there's a majlis, right? There is one special person never ever misses any majlis that is meant for Ahlul Bayt. And that is Zahra alayhi salam. Now, if you and I, you have a majlis in your house, a gathering, and you hear Ayatollah and say it's his turn is coming down majlis, how would you treat that majlis? Special majlis. Because there's no alim. Marja is there. Now, if a person who from Ahlul Bayt is part of that majlis, how should you treat that majlis? Now, we have a hadith no majlis in the house. In the center, on the street, if it meets for Ahlul Bayt, Zahra is there in that majlis. And Allah, I'm saying this, and I don't doubt that Zahra is with us in this majlis as well. No majlis unless she's there. If she's there, we have to treat that majlis very special. Because somebody unique, somebody special is in that majlis. So any majlis that we go, in any place, as soon as I enter the majlis, I have to be humble in that state. I have to be a humble in that majlis. And I have to watch what I say in that majlis. Because somebody special is there. Unfortunately, sometimes when we go to the majlis, that is when the backbite starts. And we have to watch that. Allah, we really have to watch that. Because majlis is not a place for this. When you enter the majlis, look at yourself that you are in the holy place. And what you say, what you do, is counted. And it's been watched by Ahlul Bayt al So in the state, even when we go to a majlis, we have to be careful. If somebody brings, wants to backbite, no, don't let them. If somebody wants to backbite, don't listen, don't sit there. Do Amr bil Ma'roof in the polite way to remind them this is a madness, we have to be polite. We have to be nice, we have to be pay attention to Ali Bayt Ali And one important message, brothers and sisters, 
And I really want this to, to be a take home message. Every majlis that you go to, well, I keep this in mind. Every majlis that you go to, let it be that you're going there to renew your allegiance to a Every majlis that you go to, Muharram, any majlis that I'm going to tell Ahl al-Bayt I am with you and not with your enemy. And that's what in Ziyarah he said, Inni silmun liman salamakum. Waharbun liman You say that. But practically, you're telling yourself that I am with you Ahl al-Bayt and not with your enemies. So majlis is a place to renew your allegiance to Ahl al-Bayt. That is something we should keep in mind. And that is one of the adab. That as soon as I get in the majlis, keep in mind I'm here to give my vote and my pledge to Imam. Through whom? Through Zahra salam. So I have to be careful what I say in that majlis. That is another adab of majlis. Another adab of majlis. When we get into the majlis, we have to give our focus to Ahl al and here I want to remind myself, brothers and sisters. Sometimes when we go to the majlis, sometimes the khatib, the speaker, the dhakir might not be my choice. Because we all have our taste, right? I like this speaker, I don't like this speaker, this speaker. You can say whatever you want to say. That's your choice. But I want you to keep one thing in mind. Please, in majlis, don't look at the dhakir as dhakir. No, don't look at him. Look at him that who is he talking about. That's different between the two. Sometimes I'm sitting, I'm talking about myself. Yes, okay, who cares about you? But he is talking about your imam. He's talking about Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam And that should give your preference to that is what your mind should go to. Not about him. And he is a servant of Ahlul Bayt. That is where our mind has to go. And Majlis, you have to give your attention to that Majlis. And here I want to test our little ones. You know, sometimes we come to the Majlis and we have our own game. That is not a disrespect to the Dhaqar or Alim or speaker. It's disrespect to Imam. Because you're not coming to the majlis of the dhakir. You're not coming to the majlis of alim. You're coming to the majlis of imam. Now if I come and I have my own laptop, or I come and I have my own iPhone, and I'm playing in there, you're not disrespecting the speaker's book of imam. Because you said to yourself, I'm coming to the majlis of imam, but here I have something that I'm doing behind. So when we come to this kind of majlis, we have to leave everything. This is meant for imam. Unfortunately, this is kind of one of the diseases that we have. We can get away. We cannot just leave our iPhone and iPad for a few minutes. No. For Imam, it's worth it, brothers and sisters. To leave our phones, to leave our things, and focus on Imam. Even if you learn one word, one sentence from Dakar, trust me, it's worth it for Ahlul Bayt. It doesn't have to be the whole speech. One lesson you talk from Imam said, or oh, I, 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 they said something, you learn from it, it's worth it for the rest of your life. That is one of the important things that we have to do. That when we go to the Majalis, give our attention to the Imam. That this is for Imam. That is one of the adab. Another adab of Majlis also, that when we go to the Majlis, it is highly recommended, highly recommended to at least have paper and pen to write things. That's one of the adab. In Arabic, they call it Al Majalis Madaris. Majalis Madaris. Al Majalis gathering places are educational places too. That when I come to the Majalis, I'm not coming just to hear and that's no, I'm coming to learn and educate myself. Because one thing we have to understand, brothers, every majlis is supposed to be like a class. What, what do I mean by class? Let every year be like you are in one grade. 
Let's say this year, let it be your first grade. Next year, Muharram, let it be your second grade. Meaning every year you elevate yourself in terms of knowledge about Allah. So every year when you come, you have to learn something. That next year you are progressed in terms, you are advanced in terms of the teachers of Ali Bayt That's very important, brothers. It's not that I just come and I hear a medalist from here and it goes out of the room. It has to be educational. I learned something. And compare last year and this year. And make sure that my last year Muharram is what? It's not like this year Muharram. And look and make sure that your next year Muharram is going to be better than this. Meaning every year is a progress process. That is something to keep in mind. That every year I want to make my Muharram this year better than the last year. So when we come to the Majlis, we have to make sure that we have something to learn. Write something. Take something home. And that is one of the adab of Majlis. Another adab of Majlis. When we come to the Majlis, we are not supposed in the Majlis of Ahlul Bayt to do something that is disrespect to the Majlis. Example, say it. Sometimes when we come to the Majlis, MashaAllah, we want to be comfortable in the chairs and we want to be comfortable too. But you know, the best place to be in the Majlis is to sit on the floor. And you know what that means? Yes, if somebody is sick, have a back, pro I mean, a back problem, that's different. But I'm used, I'm young, I'm okay. The best place is sitting on the floor. Why? They say it's sitting on the floor. It shows your humbleness towards Ahlul oh, Bayt. And you can sit in the chair. That's fine. But if I choose to sit, it's better to sit on the floor. Because even Ahlul Bayt, and you look at the Maraja, our Maraja, even the Maraja, the great scholars, when they come to the Majalis, they sit on the floor. Yes, they might lean at the wall, but they always prefer to sit on the floor. Because sitting on the floor and showing the humbleness to Ahlul Bayt it gives you more the wall. And that is one of the adab of Majlis. That always sit on the floor. And then when you sit also, there is adab al -jilus. Sometimes we can sit and we stretch our legs. Sometimes we can sit and we sit in our half is on the wall and the other half is on the other wall. No, the adab of majlis of Imam Hussein is to sit folding your hands. That is one of the adab. To sit as one is sitting in front of his master. With respect. And that makes it well. Adds an increase the value to that person's status. That is one of the adab of majlis. Another adab of majlis. Is when you go to the majlis, try as much as possible. I know it's not easy for everybody, but try as much as possible not to leave the majlis. If it's majlis of Aza, unless you leave with the tears. You know, that is one of the adab of majlis. You know, we have hadith from Imam Jafar al Sadiq alayhi salam. He said, when you sit to talk about us, Ahl al Bayt, and you talk about our Masa'ib, he said, I love you to make each other to cry for our Majalis. It's very important. If I cannot cry, at least try to make an effort of it. It's very important. You know, one of our great scholars, Ayatollah Man Ash Najafi, one of the Maraja, great scholars. His grave is still in Qum. It's one of the great honor. And he was, all his life, he spent in serving Ma'suma in Qum. He was the one who used to go and open. Maraja! But he opens the door. And there is one narration that one night it was very cold. And he was not able to go and open the door. And he fell asleep. Then he saw Ma'asum in his dream. I told him, Marash in my Jeffrey. And Ma'asum said, Today you didn't come to open the door. He said, Yes. 
And my son said, do you know that there are people at the door? You want to come to visit me? I told him that he jumped and rushed in the snow. In the and snow. The door. And he was begging the Zohar for waiting to come and visit the Masun. This Adam, who was very, very pious, you know, he never went to Hajj because he was very poor. He couldn't afford to go to Hajj. His murder, he gets the homes and all that. But he always spent it on the needies. And he never took anything from the homes that they gave him. All he did, he was managed to get a taxi and he lived all his life on that taxi. This Ayatollah Marashid Najafi, before he passed, you know, he wrote a will. What was the will? He wrote what he wants to be done, washing him and all that. Then he said, I have a handkerchief that in one of the medleys of Imam Hussein, I cried for him. And I want to be buried with that handkerchief. Just to tell you the value of crying. By the way, but I'm not talking about not doing anything and just waiting for cry and put it in your grave. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about after doing my wajibat, doing my staying away from muharramat, being a good and true servant of Ahlul Bayt plus the crime of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, it makes a big difference in the Qiyamah in Barzah. That is the value of crying. That Allah, Ayatollah Marashid Najafi, he makes sure that they put their handkerchief with him in his grave. And the handkerchief, the value of it was because he cried for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So when we come to the majlis, it's very important that in that majlis, if I can share a one and drop tear for Imam Hussein alayhi salam, it's going to benefit me in the Yom al -Barza. Because we have hadith that they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish an eye that drop a tear in the sorrow of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Any eyes. That spent a tear or, or dropped a tear for Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Allah said, I feel shy to punish them and put them in the hell fire. So one of the adab of majlis, when we go to the majlis, we should try as much as possible to make sure that we share some tears in that majlis. That is one of the adab. Another adab of the majlis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is that when we go to the majlis, it shouldn't be a place where we go and leave trash. You know, sometimes when we go to the majalis, and I say majalis, doesn't matter, in the house or anybody, anywhere. If it's meant for Ahlul Bayt, we're supposed to keep the place clean. Unless if the person, the owner of the house, you know, don't, that's different. But I take in my own trash and leaving it in the majlis, it's not disrespect for the owner of the house or the owner of the majlis, but the, it's disrespect for Ahlul Bayt And as of some of the some of the scholars, they say when you go and you see the picture, not the respect for the person, no, for the Ahlul Bayt Because the gathering is meant for them. So anything that I find or I see is dirty or something that is not supposed to be there, I am supposed to pick it up. And respect for Ahlul Bayt And the thawab of that person is high in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another adab of the majlis. That when we come to the majlis, we're supposed to make sure that that majlis is also done in the way that pleases Ahlul Bayt And this is, I think, the most important part. The most important part is this that I'm going to mention. And that is when I go to the majlis, before I leave to the majlis, I have to purify my intention to be just for a little bit. That is where the value of all this comes in. The value of majlis, I go there, I cry, I did everything. It's good. But the niyyah is very important. Before we leave house, I have to space out to clean my heart. Not because my brother is going. If I don't go, 
then they will call him, I'm not a good Shia. No. Don't go there because I want people to know that I belong to the community. No. Go there because you know you're supposed to be there for a little bit. Let your intention be clean. Because everything that we mention now, if the intention is not good, trust me, it's not valuable. A little bit, they don't want it. It doesn't gonna get anywhere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned one ayah when he talks about the hajjis when they go to hajj, that they do everything. They left their homes, they spent money, they sacrifice. Allah said, I don't care of any of that. But I care one thing. He said, لَن يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومَهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ تَقْوَنْ He said, the blood that you shared in the hajj, it doesn't get to me. The meat, I'm not going to eat it. Whatever you decide, it doesn't matter to me. But what matters to Allah is what? It's the heart and the niyyah that you started the amal. You know, one of the Nuwab al-Arba, one of the representatives of the 12th Imam, the last one, they said one day, he was calling, he said one day, he came, the Imam came to, to visit him, and after they talk, he brought a lot of money, and he gave it to Imam. This is homes they brought, this is for you, this is gift, this, this, this. And as much as the money is, Imam look at all the money and he picks the less money in that. And he said, I'll take this one. The Naib asked him, I said, why about those the rest of the money? This is the, the, this is the, the biggest money, why don't you take it? Imam said, it's not about the quantity of it. It's about the quality of it. They said, that smallest amount that they brought, and it was brought by a lady. A lady, they said. The lady was the one who brought the money. They said, the imam picked that money. They said, because this woman, she brought it, and the intention is pure. And we want this better than the big money, which the intention is not pure. When we go to the majalis, our intention has to be clean. Don't go because people will say, or because you want to show no, go there because you want to go because it's a bad. That is what makes it valuable. And on top of that, brothers, when we go to the majlis, treat the majlis as what? A bad. And that is what is recommended. And one of the adab, before you enter majlis, it's good to be in the state of tahara. To be in the state of wudu. Before you sit in the majlis, it's good that before you come and sit, be in the state of wudu. Because remember, you are coming in the gathering of people who Allah already purified. And you want to be pure in the gatherings of the purified ones. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهَ لِيُذْهِبَ أَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ so it's one of the other before you come to the majlis be in the city of Wudu. And Wudu being in the city of Wudu itself has a huge reward in Islam. Just wudu. You know, wudu has been recommended in Islam even before you go to bed. I want to go to bed. And when I sleep, my wudu is void. Yes, they say do wudu before you go to bed. And they ask Rasulullah one time, Ya Rasulullah, what is the significance of going to bed while I'm in the wudu? Then the Prophet says, Man nama ala wudu fa adraka wal maut fi tilka layla fa huwa inda Allahi shaheed. A person who goes to bed with the wudu, if Allah takes their life in that, that night, He said the person will be counted as shaheed. <laughs> and the wudu, that makes that difference. A person goes to bed, they die and they sleep. A person goes to the bed without wudu, they are not with the same in the sight of Allah. And the difference is what? Wudu. 
This one has wudu, this one doesn't, and they both died and they sleep, but Allah count this one who has wudu as the one who's shaheed. What about the majalis? When you come to the Madness of Ahlul Bayt, it's highly recommended to come in the state of wudu. You pee in that Majlis. And Ahlul Bayt, they also accept you because you come back in the state of wudu. And another major, another, another, but there's so many of them our scholars mention. One of them as well, Adam of Majlis, is the Majlis is placed to ask Allah your needs as well. Any place that you go as a majlis is the place of dua Allah never reject. And that's why when you go to the uh, majlis also, especially, especially at the time of Masa'ib, huh? at the time of Masa'ib, if you have any needs, that is the time to start asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or if you want, preferable, preferable after the Masiba. Get the Masiba to be for Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam. And after the musibah, you make your du'a. That du'a Allah does not reject. And that is one of the adab. That when you come to the majlis, at the after the musaib, one asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sickness that the person is going through, difficulty a person is going through, something you want from Allah, at the time of that after musaib, is the best time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will not reject you. Because of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam. That is... One of the adab of Majlis. And the last one that I would like to add, brothers and sisters, that in the Majlis of Ahlul Bayt, when we go and we sit in the Majlis, we have to feel and be in the state that the Imam or Ma'asub is watching us. Even if you don't see them, but be in mind that they see you. That is very important. You know, Majlis is a place that Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam, they come to see their Shia. So when you are in that Majlis, you have to let yourself understand that I am under watch of Ma'asum. And as I said, we have some rewire that they say any Majlis that is meant for any Ma'asum, Ahlul Bayt, they all come. But the one that we have, authentic among our scholars, is that Zahra, she definitely comes in the Majlis. So you have to make sure that if you are in the Majlis, someone is watching you. So you have to do the best of what you can in that Majlis. If you have that thinking, that Majlis becomes valuable Majlis in the sight of Allah and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam And the reward of that Majlis becomes higher as well in the sight of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be among those who glorifies and respect the majalis of Ali al-Bayt Bless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us be among those who take the majalis of Ali al-Bayt as the place of ibadah, ya Rabbi al And ya Allah, every majlis that comes in our life, let it be a majlis that brings us closer to you and Ahlul Bayt and Ya Allah, every majlis that we attend, Ya Allah, let it be a reason that we will get the shafa of Ahlul Bayt in the Day of Judgment. Amen. Ya Allah, strengthen our relationship with our Imams, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, do not separate between us and our Imams, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, grant us the shafa of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, Ya Allah. Dear Marhumeen and Marhumat, let's recite Surah Al-Fatiha with the Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We're going to start with the young kids, inshallah, today. You're Hasim, you're not. Any questions? He's not the young kids.